Hello again, this is Dr. Brain. Remember from our last uh, slide we were talking about the motor decusation? This slide is taken from the caudal medulla also, but it's slightly rostral to the motor decusation, and this is the sensory decusation. There are ten important structures which you must be familiar with in this slide. First of all, this very thin fiber track up here is the fasciculus gracilis, and right under it is the nucleus gracilis. Two, the fasciculus cuneatus, and right under it, the nucleus cuneatus. Three, the spinal trigeminal tract, and under it, the spinal trigeminal nucleus. Four, the lateral spinothalamic tract. Again, please use your imagination. the lateral spinothalamic tract. Five, the pyramids, otherwise known as the cortical spinal tract, the pyramid. Now these structures are pretty much the same as we saw in the most caudal region, the, the motor decusation, but there are some changes now which are important to point out. This slide is the slide which tells us about the sensory decusation. Therefore, I'd like to point out that these neurons here and the nucleus gracilis are now crossing over to the opposite side and forming a tract called the medial lemniscus. The fibers in the nucleus crossing over, forming the medial lemniscus. You see the, here these fibers these apparent round fibers, these are the crossing fibers. These are called, this is the internal crossing fibers forming this structure, the medial lemniscus. Sometimes we refer to these as the internal arcuate fibers. The fibers from the nucleus cuneatus, this is the nucleus cuneatus, are also crossing in the internal arcuate fibers and they're forming the most rostral portion of the medial lemniscus, which is this region right here. The spinal trigeminal tract is descending from the trigeminal nerve, and it is synapsing in the spinal trigeminal nucleus. These fibers form, these fibers from the nucleus form a rather uh, oblong and not directly um, ascending pathway, but the secondary pathway is called the ventral trigeminal thalamic tract. Here, using our imagination again, is where the lateral spinal thalamic tract is, and here, of course, as I pointed out, is the motor of the pyramid. So basically the change in the change from the motor decusation relates to these crossing fibers from the medial lemniscus to the medial lemniscus from these nuclei, the nucleus gracilis and the nucleus cuneatus. We must also pay attention to this nuclear structure here, which is the hypoglossal nucleus. These are the neurons which will innervate the tongue, and then slightly rostral to that, the dorsal motor nucleus, which is the parasympathetic nucleus of the vagus nerve, and then very, very faintly we can see here the tract in the nucleus solitarius, and at this region, this tract is receiving visceral sensory information, slightly more rostrally, it will be receiving information from taste. Those are the important ten structures of the sensory decusation, which is in the caudal portion of the spinal cord. Are there any questions regarding this? I have two questions. Yes. First what, of all, is it a fair statement to say that the sensory decusation occurs superior to the motor decusation? I think we would say it somewhat differently. We would say it's more rostral, not it. It's more rostral, not superior. Okay. It occurs in a more rostral, that is, in front of the motor decusation. Okay. The last question is about the term. Uh, medial lemniscus. Is it a fair statement to say that the 
medial lemniscus is a structure involved with uh, sensory decusation? Yes, that's ex exactly correct. This is the medial lemniscus, and this is the this fiber tract will go all the way up to area three of the cortex, and this is a course of carrying proprioceptive information, vibration, and two-point discrimination from the body. This is the medial lemniscus, one of the most important uh, tracks in the central nervous system, and of course we're always going to be talking about this. This, of course, is related to posterior columns, as we've mentioned in our spinal cord section. Okay. Are there any other questions? If not, we'll proceed to our next slide, number three, and it will be further discussion of our interesting neuroanatomy topic.